What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel, it's me Kazit Lebo bringing you another hero showcase. Now some people have requested to see Catherine so I'm going to cover Catherine for you and how I build her and uh, I'm going to show another little way you can build her as well. This is mine so I'm going to get into the, the content but before we do please do click like, subscribe and comment below to help the channel grow. Thanks again. Now Catherine is an amazing hero and everyone loves Catherine. I'm hoping a lot of you have finished the campaign by now and uh, can really utilize your Catherine as well. There are other ways to obtain Catherine that is from the likes of the the, uh, the campaign quests and um, Tower of Mark as well. So the further you progress, you can unlock more Catherine. Hence why we have exclusive level four. Um, it does take a long time, okay? We'll go through the exclusives in a moment and how much of a difference it can make to her. There is no other way to upgrade her other than getting more copies of Catherine, the same as Ruin, or the same as Little Jack currently, obviously. Um, now, let's talk about her skills and what she does. Now, her basic attack is a very good and effective skill. I say skill, it's not really a skill because it doesn't count as a skill if we were saying using the recovery horn aura. Now, it deals two stages of attack, 100% attack damage each time uh, to one enemy, obviously. The second stage of which has a 60% chance to inflict feebleness 2, which is big. You know, it increases all damage taken by 40%. A 40% damage increase to everything. That includes health burn, that includes poisons, bleeds, burns. Direct damage, absolutely everything, okay? So remember that, feebleness increases all damage taken. Her second skill, this is an active skill, uh, it grants consolidation to on all allies for two turns, which is uh, very, very nice. It means that we're all taking 40% less damage from, again, all damage, not just direct damage, all damage. Um, so that means dots. Now, obviously, her exclusive three is a mega one. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now her passive is restores allies health by 4.8% of Catherine's maximum health at the beginning of each turn. This obviously increases here with the levels. Um, this is a nice one, especially at Susan 3 when she gets an extra turn as well. And if you're using Recovery Horn, or we'll talk about that in a moment too, um, it's like a double whammy and it's, it's just amazing to, to heal your team with. Now her final active skill is high spirited and this is the one that everyone loves and wants because it just makes things so much nicer for us progressing through content uh, grants all allies counter attack and a shield by 40 percent of maximum health for two turns this does get cooled down to four turns um once upgraded now it's, it's very big and you can see here that it's level two it goes to 60 percent which is huge it's absolutely massive um we're going to look at her exclusives quickly uh, level 1 cleanses one layer of debuff for every ally at random when a burst of energy is triggered. Now, burst of energy is um, this. No, it's not this one. It's, it's, it's the passive skill. So as soon as she gets a turn, um, she's going to, at the beginning of a turn, she's going to cleanse allies' um, uh, random buff. Now, level 2, high spirited increases the shield value to 60% of maximum health, which again is huge. We said that. Level 3 is a massive one because Catherine gains one more action turn after she releases Solid Guardian. That is the one I first clicked on here, which is here. So she grants Consolidation 2, and then she gets to go, you know what? Let's go and, uh, and prop counter attack as well. These two together make your team extremely solid. So, really, if you. Getting level one is a huge one as well, okay, especially in arena. This this will help you massively. Um, and the next one obviously is very, very good PvE content and summon arena. And level three is just nutty. It's just nutty. It's so good. Uh, be wary though, it can cause you to take extra turns if you're trying to finish content in under 100 turns. That can and sometimes may, you may want to try and uh, steer away from using that. Now let's have a look at her emblems and how I built my Catherine. Now you're probably thinking, whoa, okay, Kaza, you've not gone for speed. Well, that is the other way you can build her. Um, this is the way I have mine built. Down the defensive tree in max health for um, the shield. So I get a larger shield. Uh, we take the effect resistance. Um, you could go defense percent, but I personally prefer the effect resistance. Uh, damage over time received is less. Uh, before the end of each turn, we get effect resistance plus percent. Control resistance. Uh, restores self health uh, by at the beginning of each wave for the first three turns. And damage received when a turn ends is less as well. And then the max health here. Now, obviously, on the support tree, we take the health in increase. We take the shield effect increase. We take healing effect increase. 
Uh, for allies with less than 50% health, healing effect is increased. That can help a little bit, okay? That can help a bit. Uh, when fixing a layer of buff or debuff successfully, cell speed increases by a certain amount here. Uh, turn meter reduction taken is is better. Uh, there's a certain percent chance to reduce the cooldown of this skill by one. Now, I'm unsure why I have this one selected better and better because it shouldn't be selected because she's not giving attribute buffs. So I don't know why I have that one selected. I shouldn't really have that one selected. I'll probably choose Sacred Winds. I'll probably choose Sacred Winds. Probably choose Sacred Winds. I mean, the effective one can help a little bit of feebleness too, but... But so if you are going down this tree and you want to take speed, feel free to take speed because it is very nice to get ahead of your opponent. Um, a lot of people will choose speed. But for dungeons and, st and stuff like that, I prefer to have her with the max health on my emblems just because it, it, it's, it's much safer for us. It's just much safer for us. Now, let's have a little look at, we'll check her gear after, her aura. Now, we use a recovery horn aura. Yes, it is an epic aura. It isn't the easiest to obtain. It will take a little bit of time right, to, get, to, get the, to get the room to do it. But it restores all allies' health by 5% at level 2 upgraded um, or self-max health before casting active skills. Now you can think, right, she has her passive already. She has her passive already, burst of energy where she restores all allies health at the beginning of each turn. Now if we consider this is an active skill and she's casting this and then high spirit is an active skill and she's casting this as well. This makes her amazing in guild boss, especially because it means that we don't need a healer on our guild boss team and we can just go full nuke, full nuke. And that's how you're gonna get the damage on the guild boss. Because if we have a healer in our team as well, it is taking away some of the damage. So um, if you don't have recovery horn aura, if you don't have recovery horn aura, you can use something like the urgent treatment aura um, that can help some of your lower down heroes. And probably one of the elites would be. Uh, wait there. Sorry, I am colorblind for those that don't know. I'm colorblind. So it's hard for me to see the difference between blue and purple. Would it be the extra recovery? No. I mean, you could use a Dwarven Blessing Aura where she increases her max health, which is going to be bigger shield. Uh, but remember, Guild Boss ignores shields. Just in case you didn't know that little factor there, that is an important factor to add. Um, do -do 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 -do. All right, so I would either just choose Urgent Treatment Aura. Oh, maybe the extra recovery aura. That's a tricky one. I'd probably stick the green one and upgrade it as far as I can for, for the bonuses. Um, that is a tricky one. All right, let's have a look at her equipment and how I have my um, my Catherine built. Now, she has, she's hasn't. she got two five-star pieces here, okay? She's not, like, really gear-orientated. Now, some people are going to want to make her as fast as they can. However, I don't do it like that. I obviously put her in a first aid set and a feather set. Uh, if you can get the health plus the speed, that's the best way to go. So first aid set, feather set. Um, other than that, you want to be using a speed set. Maybe mix the speed set with a health set. But you do want her going before all your allies. Um, what kind of stats do we focus towards? Well, I focus on HP rate, speed, and um, effect, effect resistance. So here we have, I know, I know there's crit rate on here, but there's speed on here. This is the best I had at my disposal when I have a lot of characters built. It's hard to get those substats. Uh, on the boots, we have healing effect, which I think it does increase her burst of passive, uh, her passive um, healing. Um, HP rate and HP. On her ring, we have speed, healing effect. This is just a trash piece, okay? She's not like, the main thing is getting the speed on her um, if you're not taking that emblem and also getting as much health as you can. As much health as you can. And remember, defense is important. Defense is very good. And also getting some effect hit because effect hit against the enemy means we're going to be putting Feebleness 2 on. And Feebleness 2 does do a lot to difference of your damage. On the sense of artifacts, now I have a health artifact on with speed and HP rate. Not the best rolls, duly noted. 
Um, we have effect resistance as a second artifact because I don't want her getting stunned. And, you know, if she gets frozen, it means that she can't cleanse the rest of my allies. So if she has some effect resistance, say we're coming up against this seal, then it can be more effective because she may resist that completely. And then that puts us in a much better position to unfreeze our allies. Um, make sure you get speed on here or health rate if you can get it. Final artifact, always speed and always try and focus for that health rate. If you can't get a health rate, effect resistance is going to help. A bit of effect it will help as well, don't forget, because we want to be landing that feebleness too. I know we haven't got a huge amount here, but she is going to be countering a lot and um, hopefully, it, hopefully it lands. So that's that said, that's how we build our Catherine. This is what we do with her. Now, how do we effectively use her? And why is she best used? Pretty much the entire game is the answer, but she is a red mark hero, and she is also sword harbor guards, which makes her amazing for faction abyss. One of the easiest faction abysses to progress is sword harbor guards, and that's because we have the likes of, say, uh, Zia, we have Sigmund, we, you know, all heroes that are mega, just mega damage dealers. We have Luz, we have Yoko. Yoko is uh, a tough one. But let's just go into a faction of us. I'm not going to go into the hard one. I'm going to try stage 22 a moment. Let's just see how it goes. We're going to leave it on auto. Um, and, and oh, oh, sorry, I'm farming. Um, I'm farming emblems at the same time. Let's have a little look. Let's have a little looky, 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 looky. I'm still in the middle as well. I need to move over. Oh, sorry. So obviously this is Faction Abyss, and it does get hard around this point. Now, obviously we have uh, a Zia upgraded here, we have a Sigmund upgraded. Now you see Naskama is a pain in the ass because he will steal your buffs. So coming into this with auto on is probably not the best idea. And for that fact, I am going to restart. I am going to restart because we'll just get nuked. Um, I will I will proc my, um, my counter attack. Now I'm going to try and nuke Naskama rather than using my Zia's second ability here where she squats to increase the damage. Let's see how much damage we can do on him. Uh, he is decent. Uh, let's put some health burns on. And hopefully Naskama would die here. Obviously we see the counter attacks going there which uh, Catherine has enabled. And you see that Sigmund is counter attacking twice sometimes. That's because he has a base uh, counter attack as well as the counter attack buff which is massive. Now we can squat. Now we can put it back on auto I believe. I'm hoping we kill them before um, we don't get the counter-attack up. We won't use counter-attack this turn, hopefully. Oh, for Christ's sake. That means that the next stage is probably going to be tough. But you can see the way that she's kind of used. I always focus Taff here first because he's a pain in my ass. Uh, he cleanses, as you can see, which has happened there. Then Wolsey normally goes down because he's healing the allies with the, the poisons on us. But how is actually annoying in here because he taunts us to, to make sure we're hitting him. So we're lucky enough, obviously we are, I think we're well geared enough. Oh wow, that was close. Unfortunately we're going to go into the boss round after Catherine has uh, used consolidation and uh, counter attack. So can we survive this? I doubt it very much. Uh, yeah. Can Sigmund and Catherine do this together? You can see the cleanses coming in and obviously um, the counter attack making it huge with, with Sigmund. This combo here, Sigmund and Catherine is very, very nice. I will do a video on Sigmund on how my one is built at some point. I think we're going to win here as well. Yeah, we, we this is a win. Um, so that's quite surprising considering we didn't really, you know, focus it hugely. Um, it was autoed other than the first stage where we targeted Naskama. Halfway. You can see, you can see her emblems. Um, he, the healing that she does, she grants to, to the t is insane. You know that, especially with the recovery horn aura. You could just see the healing. It's it's crazy good. She can be like um, a shielder healer. She just enables everything. We will have a little look at the uh, campaign after, uh, not the campaign, because everyone knows how good she is in campaign. You can see it's pretty similar to here. But we're gonna have a look at the guild boss. We're gonna have a look at the guild boss and how it does. Unfortunately, there's here did die, so we didn't get the full three stars. If she was mangling it, however, you probably would have had the three stars for that. And the boss would have died faster. Now, let's have a little look at the guild. Oh, I'm out of turns. I'm out of turns. 
But bear in mind, the guild boss will ignore shields. Now, if you have Catherine on your team with the recovery horn aura and um, especially upgraded exclusives, you're going to be getting that extra healing, which is huge, making your team pretty indestructible. Um, where else could we quickly test her? Obviously, she's amazing for Dwarven Ruins. Let's, um, the Marius event is on at the moment. Let's do a little run on Marius. Let's do a little run on Alright, so let's have a little look and see how we fare in stage 26 of Marius with Catherine and this, obviously, who else is in this team is pretty, it's, you know, it is a top, top team. Um, but we can see here just how well we do. Obviously, we wasted our uh, shield of Alec. We didn't need it. We could probably use with um, combining it on here. Now you can see that the basic ability on Elec is very useful, especially on the counter attack, because it gives us a chance to stun on the counter, which is massive. It is massive. We're holding off pretty well so far, but we have got quite a few health bones on us. We should clear this okay. Yeah, I think they'll be dead now. And we've wasted... Okay, it took a little bit too long there. We've kind of wasted that consolidation and shield with the counter-attack there to begin with. So I'm hoping we can stay alive on this Marius. I do need to adjust my smart casting um, slightly because it's clearly not quite up to date. Um, but we should be safe. We should be safe. The fact is, is that Alec protects, gives us enough protection in the other waves. And then by the time we get to the final boss, if he goes down, it's not the end of the world. It does make it a little bit trickier. As you can see, we're taking, we're taking some damage. But um, we should be safe with the likes of Catherine and Luna here. And now we can res resurrect Alec. He may make his way back up. I'm unsure. Um, but just seeing how much healing Catherine can do as well in this showcase is very good. Because she is the core to every team really is she she can be used everywhere and she she just does so much for us so this one is a win and um i think it showcased her enough uh, i'm sorry i couldn't show you the guild boss attempt but you can watch one of my other videos where she is showcased in that i'm hoping this gives you some some outlook on catherine how to use her effectively um and I hope I hope you're satisfied with it. So I am Kazat Nabul. Thank you very much for watching my content, and I will see you all very soon. Take care.